1967 and 2020 are very similar. As far as this problem of law and order is concerned, I am for law and order. I am the law and order candidate. Back then it was black power. Today it's Black Lives Matters. And of all of our American cities, however troubled they may be, looting and arson have nothing to do with civil rights. But what we are now seeing on the streets of our cities has nothing to do with justice. There is uh, patience that people had with their struggle 52 years ago. Well, in my opinion, it just left from frustration, you know. And people will not be that patient today. So looting is what you do. We learned it from you. We learned violence from you. So if you want us to do better, then damn it, you do better. President Lyndon Johnson appointed an 11-member advisory commission on civil disorders. In 1967, riots broke out in all of the major cities in America, including here in Louisville, Kentucky. And these riots had a devastating effect. They were called riots, but they were really rebellions against systemic and structural injustice. Those who make peaceful revolution impossible will make violent revolution inevitable. The Kerner Report, the only study in American history formed by the government which established the reality of systemic racism. They clearly said in this report, white America created this situation. And guess what? White America is maintaining their policies, their things that are in place. The basic conclusion of the Kerner Commission Report was that our nation is moving toward two societies one black, one white, separate and unequal. One of the tragedies of the 20th century was that President Johnson did not act on the recommendations that were made in the report. And here we are, 52 years later, and what do we see? The killings of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, David McAtee have led people in more than 2,000 American cities to take to the streets in justifiable protest. The best time for Kerner Commission II would have been in 1968. The second best time for Kerner Commission II is today. And the question is whether America will do it. And that's why here at Simmons College of Kentucky, we are instituting this initiative, Kerner Commission 2.0. What is new about this Kerner Commission 2 is who is giving leadership to it. Many organizations are putting out resolutions, but what we see happening between Simmons College of Kentucky and Kentucky State University is resolved. They are taking action to make a difference. Kentucky's only private HBCU and Kentucky's only public HBCU joining hands to work together for the betterment of the Commonwealth and the nation in which we live. The governor of our state, the Honorable Andy Bashir, is a strong advocate for this initiative. And also locally, it's being touted by Mayor Fisher, who also is the president of the National Council of Mayors. As a city and a country, this is our moment to take action for long, long overdue justice. As a society, we have got to figure out how to break this cycle of tragedy and violence and institutional racism. And the only way we can do it is together. And that's why this partnership between Simmons in Kentucky State is so important. That's why the launching of Kerner 2.0 is so important. This initiative is going to have four targets. The first is to educate the community about black issues. When people from outside of the community see problems taking place within the community or even situations that they believe are problems, um, they come in with what we call a deficit-based approach 
to solving those problems. And that deficit-based approach, it takes for granted that the community's broken. It takes for granted that the community has nothing to offer. That is not true. Scattered throughout West Louisville are indigenous, community-based institutions that are doing great things. The reason why the community is still strong is because of these institutions that many in the larger community do not know about, has not taken the time to find out about, and to be quite frankly, sometimes don't have confidence in because of biases. The difference between formalized structural racism and an informal racism that takes place in the community. There, there's something called opportunity hoarding. Today, racism is maintained not primarily by what white people and white institutions and philanthropy and government does against black people. But it's what philanthropy does for white people that they will not do for black people. Tremendously discouraging. And you realize that my small organization is going to be compared to larger organizations that have a history of, of high levels of support. It's difficult for the, the black community to get a foot in the door with certain philanthropic organizations. So the impact of that philanthropic redlining goes from year to year and decade to decade. And sadly, it can be traced from generation to generation. Isolation, racial isolation is one of our enemies. When people don't see people that don't look like them, they become distrustful. The more we are integrated as a society, the more brilliant we will be. All right. We're seeing an awakening in the United States. People want to know, finally. The second is we're going to conduct an asset-based uh, asset community development study. The community-based approach looks at the assets and fixes from the inside out. You know what we say? No one knows a community and the needs of a community like the people that live in that community. So Simmons College of Kentucky is indeed uh, the headquarters, if you will, of authentic, genuine, academic pursuit of addressing the race issues as we see them in our own community. Well, the commission will help the larger community understand what is there in West Louisville. And those of goodwill who want to make a difference in West Louisville will have a mechanism by which they can get involved in, in, in terms of their time, talents, and treasures in investing in those um, indigenous, uh, on-the-ground institutions that want to make a difference and are making a difference in West Louisville. Coach, where you realize that we offer value, that this community has value, not only for Louisville, but for the larger whole United States, then when you're coming in, you're sharing your assets. And that you're investing in people that have the potential to make your life better.